People around the world are familiar with Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and her famous smile, or non-smile depending on who you ask. And it's exactly that uncatchable smile that has caught art historians' attention for centuries. And a few years back, I watched a documentary about how the mystery about that smile had finally been solved, and it was all traced back to Leonardo da Vinci's sfumato technique, which, it, which I will talk a lot about a little bit in this video. Um, so the art historian in me uh, was delighted uh, when I heard about that, just because I found it really interesting. But the artist in me kept wondering whether there was a direct art lesson that could be derived from that, something that I could apply directly to my own work. Um, and last week I was working on a portrait and I felt at an early stage that it was lacking a little bit of a smile. I felt like the reference photo was a little bit smiling more than the portrait that I was working on. It was still an early stage, but still I figured that's a good chance to actually try out what I had learned um, in that documentary years back. Um, so I did like, uh, you know, I put it to the test and I changed just a small detail about my portrait. And I was actually amazed at how much it changed the perception that I had of my own artwork at that point. So I figured that's something that I want to share. So if you're interested in first hearing about the Mona Lisa smile and uh, what it is all about and what it, why, is it, why it is so mysterious and, you know, uh, and then also about the art lesson that I took from it and what I did with it. Um, yeah, if, if you find that interesting, um, you know, get comfortable, hang on. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you all about it. Okay, let's take a look at the Mona Lisa. What I learned about her smile in that documentary is that when you look at her mouth directly, there's hardly any smile. But when you focus your eyes elsewhere on the painting, she will appear to smile more. The reason for this, it was explained, lies in the sfumato technique that Leonardo da Vinci developed. Sfumato is characterized by very soft transitions between colors, an absence of harsh lines, and it appears as if everything is blurred by smoke hanging around. The term sfumato is derived from the Italian word for smoke, which is fumo. Now, another way you can describe it is by saying that the subject is slightly out of focus, which is something that Leonardo da Vinci knew a lot about due to his studies of optics. So he used the sfumato technique for the Mona Lisa, meaning there are no harsh lines and adjacent areas are very well blended. It is said that he achieved that by continuously adding very thin glazes of paint rather than thick layers to the panel. Anyway, when we look at the mouth, we see very soft transitions of the lips to the surrounding skin, we see very soft shadow transitions around the mouth, and the oral fissure, I had to look that word up, uh, what I mean is the, the opening of the mouth. Uh, so the oral fissure is just a soft line. Now the debate on whether she's smiling or not actually begins here. In my personal opinion, her mouth is in a neutral position. The corner of her mouth is turned upward slightly and the center of her mouth lies below the corners of the, her mouth. So I'd say she has a very pleasant resting mouth and not a resting bitch face as we so lovingly say these days. Uh, I actually have that. When you look at my mouth in a neutral position, you will see that while the corners are also with a slight upward turn, um, but they lie below the center of my mouth, which makes me look rather serious or arrogant or you know, bitchy. Um, and the Mona Lisa doesn't have that. Her mouth is relaxed, but I don't see any facial muscles pulling at the corners of her mouth to form an actual smile. But I mean, that's how I see it. it might be different for you. But you know, if you ask me, this is a neutral mouth, a neutral expression. Okay, so when we don't look at the mouth directly, meaning we only perceive it through our peripheral vision, then that's when the smile appears. When we see things just in the corner of our eyes, they are blurred and without distinct shape. So when you add the sfumato blur and the peripheral vision blur, 
our mind will stitch together a different mouth than what Leonardo distinctly painted here. I really want to try to visualize that. The thing is I can't control at what scale you're watching this video. And if you're watching it on your phone, it will look distinctly different from a big PC monitor. So I can just hope you can follow, you know, my explanations here. The peripheral vision blur comes into play when you really see parts of the painting just in the corners of your eyes. So it has to be like the entire image has to be sufficiently big in front of your eyes. But what I'm trying to do here in this video is to mimic that extra blur for, um, you know, from your peripheral vision, I pixelated the image. Uh, so this is the result of that. Now, when I try to draw the mouth or explicitly the opening of the mouth uh, from this pixelated version, then I would possibly draw a line like this. Now that's a kindergartner's depiction of the smile right there, isn't it? So what happened? Because the sfumato smile was already very blended and now we blurred all that even more. We simply can't tell where the corners of her mouth end and what her mouth is really shaped like. So our mind will combine the mouth with the surrounding shadows. Et voila, we have a smile. Let's look at the original again and then the line of the mouth where I see it. Okay, so here we have the mouth when we focus on it. So that's that's what we perceive when we really focus on it. And now the blurred or, you know, pixelated version, mimicking our peripheral vision. And then the mouth line I drew based on what I saw here. Now, when you look at both versions next to each other, I hope it conveys that the peripheral blurry vision of that mouth turns it into a smile. And by the way, when you look at the Mona Lisa in thumbnail size, she should also appear to be smiling more um, because here too we lose the detail. So I've never been to the Louvre to see her, you know, but I, I could kind of imagine that when you're walking up to her, I mean, let's pretend that there's not you know, a crowd of people blocking your view. Let's just say you could you could actually see her from the the other side of the room. So if you were walking up to her, I, I could imagine that she would be appearing to smile more, but then when you're standing right in front of her, maybe that smile would be gone. So I don't know, maybe that's part of the mystery, but I really don't know because I never had the pleasure to see her uh, in person. So the lesson that I took from that all is rather simple. It's really not just about the shape of the mouth, it's not all about the orientation of the corners of the mouth, but really the devil lies, as always, in the detail. Um, and in this case, it's the shading. Let's take a look again at the portrait I was working on last week. You see here an early stage of the work in progress. The shading was by no means finished at that point, but I felt that I wanted to enhance that smile just a little bit already. So I added a small shadow here and here and also changed the shape and darkness of the mustache up here. I also changed the shading of the nose a little bit between the two work in progress photographs, but that shouldn't have much to do with the perceived smile. I don't know about you, but I notice a distinct change. The newer version looks friendlier and more lively to me. I want to say that the added mustache piece up there gives volume to that part, which gives the illusion that the muscle is pulling at the corner of the mouth, aka that he's smiling, which makes me quite happy to notice. Because the thing is that I do lots of my shading work merely by comparison of reference and my own portrait, and I'm always delighted when I have a conscious thought about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and what effect it has. That's why I frequently take photos of my work in progress, just so that I have a chance to notice these things um, later on. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I find that fascinating stuff. I mean, just how much of an impact the, the tiniest details and shading can really have. I mean, it's not really a mystery to me that shading is very, very important for a portrait and getting the likeness in a portrait. 
And actually, like, you can ask any makeup artist in the world and they will tell you about the power of contouring and the wonders that can do to your face, which I find equally fascinating, to be honest. So, yeah, that's, that's that. So that's it for me for today and actually for this year. Uh, I'll be back in late January, I guess. Um, and until then, I hope you'll have a lovely time. If you have any thoughts on this topic, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, just have a wonderful time and see you in the next video. Bye!